just sort of talk briefly about how CBO views the impact of COVID going forward, both in terms of, of labor force participation and productivity, potential effects on disability. I mean, what have you guys come to any conclusions yet in that area? Uh, okay, no, it's a, it's a great question. Um, and in the report, we do provide some information on our long-term outlook. This goes out over 30 years. Later in the year, over the summer, we will put out a long-term budget outlook that looks more carefully uh, at the 30-year uh, fiscal horizon. The, the short version is that the fiscal situation gets yet more challenging the further out you go. Um, and, and you mentioned some of these challenges. You mentioned long COVID. I saw, I think over the weekend, that there's a professional hockey player who um, put out a statement that he's being affected by the you know, lingering effects of, of COVID. Um, and that's just, just one example of um, the, you know, the way that uh, COVID continues to affect many people in, in, in many ways. Um, this is a long-term effect of what happened during the pandemic to schools. And I think we have a sense already that the impacts were skewed, that the children who are already the most disadvantaged were the most further disadvantaged during the pandemic by, um, and since it's the way that the you know, school situation happened in the US, it was quite different than uh, what happened in, in other countries facing the same virus. Um, so that, that poses a long-term challenge to the US. On the other hand, there is the effect that you said about the reorganization of work um, that might lead to higher productivity. I mean, we're able to meet here, of course, on video rather than taking the time to get, to get together in person. Um, and it's too soon to know for sure. We have to have a view. So in the outlook, we have some rebound in productivity, but over the long term, we have a pretty modest view of, um, of productivity in part because of what's happening with deficits feeds into savings, investment and capital accumulation. So the, the, the deficit situation means lower capital in the future than would otherwise be the case. And that um, saps productivity, right? Workers are more productive when they have more machines, more tools to work with more capital. Um, so that that's the challenges at different um, horizons. I'm um, just say one last word on aging. You, you mentioned also that society is changing and that's the, for sure that's right. And I, I mentioned the fiscal impact of aging. There's productivity impacts and labor force participation impacts and the unemployment rate is different right? because older workers tend to have a lower unemployment rate when they participate, right? So there's both the, are you in the labor force or not in the labor force? And, you know, at, at some point older, as workers get older, they tend to have lower participation, but when they do participate, they tend to be employed. Um, so that, that means as our society ages, that will, um, uh, change the nature of the labor force as well. So you you mentioned the impact of of deficits and, and debt on capital investment. You know the standard economic argument is that budget deficits crowd out private investment. Um, you know, but it's but it's been hard empirically to prove just how big that effect is. Do do you think though that because of the changes in the nature of the economy, if we're moving to more of a service economy, are are we well, I guess there's, this, this cuts both ways. Potentially, we're less capital intensive because more of the economy is coming in the service sector, and there tends to be less capital in the service sector, which might imply that that's a, a bad thing. Um, but but that also might imply that the effect of the budget deficit on the economy is diminished because if capital is less important to the service sector, there's less deficit crowding out uh, in in that area as well. I mean, is there is there anything to that? Right, right. No, that's an, that's an interesting possibility. Um, and those sorts of changes will take place over a long period, right? There could be some, so I don't know the answer. That's the, that's the basic point. I'm trying to think of all the effects, the effects that you mentioned, and then in the other direction, potentially offsetting that is what's happening with, with workers and the labor, a labor shortage in the U.S. Or, you know, that is one. And then Two is a higher cost of capital reflecting some of this crowding out effect. Those both would tend to lead um, firms to substitute toward technology and toward capital. And we see this in lots of ways, the you know, kiosks, um, which will become ubiquitous in so many um, 
dimensions of customer service from restaurants to airports, banks, and, and so on. Um, so there's going to be effects. Uh, sorry about that. There's going to be effects in, in both directions. 